Cool. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Brandon. Um, I have a cryptic sounding talk title called Post Scarcity Web Mapping with Proto Maps. Um, so I'm going to quickly explain what I mean by that uh, with some context. Um, and I'm the lead developer of a project called Proto Maps, um, as Katie just said. Um, but this talk really focuses on open source software. Um, there's a pretty good presence of open source software at the conference. Uh, some of the most successful open source projects are uh, languages like JavaScript, Python, uh, Linux as an operating system, and the GDAL project and PostGIS, which a lot of projects here use. Um, but this talk specifically is going to be about open source web mapping software. Um, and I bet a lot of people in this room will recognize some of these projects or companies at top, uh, so like CardoDB, uh, like Mapbox, MapZen, TileMill, CloudMade. Um, but what this talk is really about is the graveyard of open source web mapping software. <laughs> because it seems like every single one of these projects is really popular for a year or two. It's great. It'll change web mapping forever. And then it just kind of goes away. Or, you know, like they go out of business or they start becoming like a car company. And this seems to happen like, this, happened, this has happened like three times at least. Um, so there seems to be this like vicious cycle um, of something about web mapping open source software. So why is this? Um, and for the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk all about why that is. Um, and really, my belief is it is the rise of what's called consumption pricing. Um, this is because the business of cartography has been subsumed into the business of software and software as a service. Um, so how this works, um, it's a really great business model. You can try it for free. Um, and you get started, you get hooked on this new tech. Um, and as your usage grows, you, you, know, you maybe have a, um, just add a credit card, you have like a tiles plan that says how many tiles you consume. Um, and it's great because you can adopt it very easily. The issue is the relationship of this business model with open source. Um, so it introduces this idea of map scarcity. And when we talk about print maps, you can uh, go photocopy it if it's you know, under a Creative Commons license. Um, but maps have become a scarce resource. Um, when we think about making a web map, we have to think about, oh, you know, like, how much of this API does my project consume? Does it, is it going to go over the limit? Um, it's like we have map shortages um, that we never had before it was all digital. Um, you might have been on a starter plan, and then your client, uh, who you're building a map for, they're like, okay, well, how much is this going to cost us? And you're like, uh, it'll cost you nothing unless you succeed and it becomes popular. <laughs> and once it becomes popular, you're going to have to be an enterprise customer. Okay. Um, anyways, great business model. Um, but let's talk a bit, little bit more about this. Um, maps are almost like the oil of cartography now. Um, so um, you fill up your tank, you go to the gas station, um, and you worry, you know, like, am I going to run out of gas before I get to Pittsburgh? Well, then you're like, am I going to run out of tiles before, you know, this project is done and I have to, like, convince my boss um, or someone in the government to pay more money for an enterprise plan? I don't know. Um, so if open source web maps reduce scarcity, then open source needs to die. Um, and that is why all of these cool web mapping projects, they find out that um, their business is a software business. Uh, they're like a venture-backed company. They need to make money. So being able to reproduce the map means that those maps must be scarce. And if we look at the eras of modern cartography, um, a lot of the maps at this conference are static maps, print maps. Uh, print maps, there's hundreds of years of history. There is you know, just infinite variation of maps. Um, in the 2000s, there was things like MapQuest. Um, there was things like ArcGIS Online. And in the 2010s, uh, there was the new Google Maps, the Slippy Maps, um, OpenStreetMap Power Maps, Apple Maps. Um, but the interesting thing about this is as the technology gets better, it seems like the, this range of maps gets more and more narrow. And that seems like it should be the opposite. Like we, we as cartographers should be empowered by better technology instead of maps becoming more and more of a centralized thing that is only in the purview of if you are a billion dollar tech company. Um, and 
it's not just about you know, filling up the tank with tiles. It's also about maps as a creative endeavor. Um, you can think about if you're an author, if the economics of authoring where you pay per page you write, then that would influence what kinds of books are written. If music was pay per time you listen to it or pay per second that you um, have an MP3 file, then that would change what kind of music is produced. So I think that's no different as a medium than maps. Um, oh, and maybe maps aren't oil. Maybe maps are just ads. Maybe maps are just ways to get you to go buy a gallon of pasta down the street. Um, but I mean, that's also a viable business model. It's um, not, maybe not the healthiest one for what we want to accomplish as cartographers. Uh, so the Protomaps project is an open source, independent, and self-funded endeavor to transform irreversibly the economics of web maps. And it centers around something called PM tiles. Um, and what this essentially means is that instead of providing a map as like a tile API, a map is just a big file. Um, and it can be hosted on uh, cloud storage like Amazon S3. You can access individual tiles uh, just with partial reads. Um, so it's something that is almost like a video file. You can download a video, you can put it online, and that should be accessible to anyone. Uh, so you should be able to download a map and reproduce the map, upload it, whether you are an individual, whether you're a business. Um, and on top of the PM tiles format, we have designed a new base map that's based on open data. Uh, it synthesizes a couple of emerging technologies. Um, it uses OSM Natural Earth right now as uh, data sets. Um, it is uh, moving towards being compliant with the TileZen project, which was open source map MapZen. Um, it uses the on-the-go map planet tiler tiling library, and the front end uh, is integrated with um, is also integrated with MapLibre. And the idea is that it is a totally openly licensed map. A base map from zoom 0 to 15 that is reproducible at zero marginal cost. Uh, we have a small team working on this. Um, we've all been doing open source web maps for about 10 years. Um, so this was a great chance for us to collaborate on a new base map. Um, and a few looks at our base map. Um, so this goes from zero, uh, zoom zero to zoom 15. It has a lot of smart automated generalization based on natural earth on, uh, um, and also on OSM. Uh, we are going to have more of an emphasis on internationalization, uh, not just being a map for English speakers, being a map uh, for Asia, for Europe, uh, for every continent. Uh, we have POIs from OpenStreetMap. Uh, we hope to integrate um, more POI sources from data sources like Overture. We have a dark mode. We have more POIs. We have data visualization styles that are more meant not as a standalone map to put markers on, but as an underlay for like a choropleth map. So the point here is that for protomaps, it is not really the status quo of a paper usage map API. It is a living software project that is open source, easy to reproduce, and easy to modify. Um, and the, um, this motivation is to encourage the customization and creativity in creating a global tile set, whether you are an individual, whether you're a nonprofit, whether you're the government, whether you're a business. Um, so a lot of the tooling that we're working on is to um, make this something that will improve from the state it's in now over time. We have a daily build. Um, the entire tile set takes about three hours to build. It runs every single day off of OpenStreetMap. So if you edit the map on OpenStreetMap, you get new data. Uh, we use the statement mapperture tool, which is really great. It lets us do a side-by-side -side comparison of the map at any two points in time. Uh, we have some tile analytics, so we can find out um, which map tiles are too heavy. We want to have a good user experience um, of being able to see uh, where you know, the really dense tiles are. Um, and we treat this as a software project. Uh, we're moving towards semantic versioning. Um, because each uh, map style is just a JavaScript package that we can version that like any other JavaScript library. 
We can also view how the map has evolved over time. So going back to this last slide of the eras of cartography, then I think um, this is you know, the narrowing of map availability and scarcity um, as time goes on. So really, it should be like this. Um, so protomaps is meant as the base uh, for other maps, for an infinite number of maps, uh, for breaking your own data, uh, openly licensed. Um, so um, our goal is to talk to people and find out who this system as an open source project is a good fit for. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can find me on Slack, on Twitter, on email, or talk to my collaborators. Some of them are here at this conference. Thanks.